Welcome back to another review. I've got a phone in to review today. It's the Xiaomi Redmi 8A sent in via Banggood. Now this has a plastic back as you can see here and I'll go in closer to show you some more of the patterns on it. I'll scan through the body design just to show you where all the connections are. On the underside we have the speaker grill. There is a type C connector, microphone and the three and a half millimeter headphone socket. I have put the spec on screen for you. This is the rough overview of the key features. Points to note, very big capacity battery. We have a face unlock system because we don't have that fingerprint scanner. It's splash resistant and you can use the FM radio without the headphones attached. Here's some information on the display. We're just a bit under the 300 pixels per inch, but it is an IPS one and it does look quite good. Decent brightness outside. Here's some of the information on the band supported for the global version and the micro SD support. There's also a rubber seal on the end, so when you insert it, that provides some water resistance. Type-C cable and the adapter. Unfortunately, it isn't a fast charge adapter. As Soon as I got the phone, I updated it to the Mi UI 11. That's the latest version, only came out recently. And I did notice some improvements from the previous one. It just seemed a little bit quicker, switching between apps. They've also changed a few things in the menu system and the animations are a little bit smoother. Your drop down menus from the top, very similar to the other Xiaomi phones that I've looked at. You can customize that to your own taste. Let's have a look at the notch. It's a teardrop style, but they've put some options in the menu system. So you have notch control as such, and I'll show you what they do. The choice is pretty simple on this. You can either just have it as it is, or you could make it a bar go straight across the top and it will incorporate the information such as the network, Wi-Fi, and battery. And the other option is the last one at the bottom where that will just reboot slightly and you'll see that it's put the information below the top bar. A couple of other interesting features, you have a dark mode and that's not just for the menu systems and the shortcuts, but some of the apps will also support that. General operation I found to be pretty snappy on this, definitely notice an improvement from the previous version after the update and it was quite a big update. It's much more responsive when I was tapping through apps or scrolling through pages. Let's test the face unlock feature. You're going to have to use this if you don't want to use a pin or a pattern. So you just open it up and within a couple of seconds it identifies your face and it remembers that. The downside with this, as it says, is that you can unlock it with a photograph or if someone looks very similar to you. It worked pretty well for me, even in low light it identified me most of the time, but it's just not going to be as secure as something like the fingerprint scanner. Looking at the charging speeds now, I've timed the standard charger and with a quick charge because this does support quick charge and you save around about 50 minutes in terms of the charging speed using a quick charge adapter. The important thing is that in about half an hour you get up to roughly almost a third of the battery power. Let's take a look at the cameras. We have a 12 megapixel on the main camera and an 8 megapixel on the front. I'll just show you the app that's included, very similar to the previous Xiaomi apps. You have your usual modes such as the portrait mode. You have some of the depth of field control and some of the filters. In the pro mode you have the white balance. You can also go into the Kelvins and set that yourself. Other features are the manual focus control. So if you need to lock the focus or focus on a specific subject, that is quite a handy feature to have. You can also go in and set the shutter speed. Obviously by default it's on auto, but you can go down to just over 30 seconds for longer exposure. And lastly, there is the ISO which is by default set to auto, but you can go in and adjust that yourself. On the top, we have the options for the flash. You can have it automatic or on. HDR mode, I usually leave that on automatic. I find that works generally pretty well. And the AI is basically in automatic scene selection mode. Other options that you have here are your standard sort of filters, your Instagram type filters. Here's the manual focus with the focus peaking activated, just a single color red but it is quite useful to have, makes it a little bit easier to focus. Not many options in the video. You do have a time lapse, 720 or full HD. That's pretty much it, but you can extend the time lapse down to around about 60 seconds if you want to play around with that. Here's a quick test shot on the front camera. This has the background blur effect on it or the depth of field control. And you can see it's done a reasonable job, though it hasn't quite got it in the corner there. It doesn't do a bad job overall, but you will notice a few imperfections. In normal lighting outside, the 12 megapixel camera performs quite well. Usually the exposure is quite accurate and so is the white balance. A few times it can be a little bit off, but if you do zoom in on pictures in good light, you'll find that the details are actually quite good on this camera. 
one area that it can struggle is in really contrasty scenes even with the HDR mode activated it does help a little bit particularly with bringing back the highlight information but I found that you could still get blown out skies even with the HDR activated albeit it's less of a problem so I'm hoping that they'll issue a software update perhaps a bit later on to give a more dramatic effect with the HDR just so that you can capture a bit more shadow detail and a little bit more in the highlights as well. In low light though you will notice that there is some more softness brought back into the image with the noise reduction although I didn't think it was too bad around ISO 1600. Flash exposures are also pretty good. We'll do a few quick video samples now. As far as the video quality goes, I think it's okay. Again, you'll see that the highlights can be a bit of a problem at times. It can be overexposing in the sky area. And also you don't have any optical stabilization on this. So you're gonna see those movements quite clearly. Dynamic range mainly is the weaker point on this camera. So let's see if Xiaomi can come out with an update, the software on this and improve that a little bit. Moving on to the gaming performance, there is a special game speed booster mode on this phone and it does seem to do a pretty good job of perhaps freeing up a bit more memory. Overall found the gaming performance to be very decent on this phone. They've improved a lot in the last couple of years. Once in a while it will drop a few frames with more demanding games but most of the higher end games that I put on the phone were very playable. I've put a few benchmarks up on the screen for you in case you want to compare it to other handsets that are around. Overall the 3D performance is definitely better than I expected and that's probably in part down to the octa-core processor. Xiaomi are saying that this phone is splash resistant, so I did splash it in the shower a few times and I didn't see any problems with the handset at all. I did notice that the screen does pick up fingerprint marks pretty easily. That's one of the downsides to that Gorilla Glass display. Good speaker quality on the Xiaomi and a reasonable low end, better than most phones that I've looked at in this price range. Overall thoughts with the Redmi 8A, the only real drawbacks that I can see to the phone is possibly the camera could be a little bit better with the dynamic range and also the face unlock. Whilst it's convenient, it isn't as secure as a pin or a fingerprint unlock. Battery life on this phone is outstanding. It's easily by a long margin, the longest battery life I've seen on a phone. Don't forget, if you have any questions on this, do drop them below in the comments section. And thanks very much for watching.